Radio. You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another wonderful, exciting episode of uh, Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff, and I am your host, Dr. Jeff Werber, and um, I want to, first of all, again, thank our sponsors. We have ProSense Pet Products. We have some uh, one of our major retailers, Walmart. We have Kong Pet Products, and today we are bringing you a very, very special guest, and I have to tell you, as now, years and years ago, I was a proud parent many years ago, considering my kids are 22 to 30 with one in between, but having a grandchild, and I can't wait to read this book to my grandchild when she's of that age, and it is called JJ, the American Street Dog, and how he came to live in our house, and the author is with us today. Her name is Diane Rose Solomon. Diane, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, our our pleasure. So, you know, first of all, you know, I want to talk about the book, and we are a call-in show, of course, so I want anyone who is listening, you can reach us at 877-385-8882. You can just join us here online by typing in your questions on our show. Just go to Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff, that tab, or you can also send me an email at drjeff, that's Dr. Jeff, at petliferadio.com. So we make it really easy, and as a reminder, anyone who calls in to talk to us to ask a question is going to get a free ProSense product or a free Kong toy, depending depending on what be your pleasure. So anyway, Diane, I got to tell you, we're going to talk about another kid's book that I even remember reading to my kids when they were younger, that I, it's still, I can almost recite it word for word. But how did J.J. the American Street Dog come into a being? Well, kind of by accident. We found, accidentally found J.J. about 19 years ago. Actually, a friend found him on a soccer field. And we were just about to go and buy a dog. And 19 years ago, I don't think anybody knew anything about rescue. I, some people did, but I certainly didn't. And it wasn't very popular then. And when we adopted JJ, or accidentally adopted him, we learned about this, all these animals that didn't have a home. And I was kind of horrified at the numbers. So fast forward you know, a few years, and I ended up on the board of a rescue organization. And then fast forward a few more years, and I said, I feel like my story needs to get out there, that if more people knew that there were all these animals that were dying because there weren't enough homes, that maybe they would make a choice not to buy a dog from a breeder or from a pet store, even worse, but they might consider rescuing. And it's just a matter of education. So it just kind of was one of those things that flowed right through me. I, there was nothing premeditated about writing a book. It just kind of happened. I wrote down my story, and I looked, and I said, I think I've got a book here, and I think it's a children's book. And the more I thought about it, I said, you know, it would be great to have a children's book because let's talk to children. Let's teach children about responsibility and the choices that they make and how they can make a difference just by a choice that they make um, and, and learning about it now. So, And plus, adults you know, read it with them, and they get an opportunity to learn the information, too. You know, it's interesting, and and for those of you out there that don't realize how big a problem it is that Diane just mentioned, but the estimate is that a dog or a cat is put to sleep in a U.S. shelter every three seconds. That is frightening. When you think of it that way, and I do agree, you want to get something, you know, uh, soon, you want to think about adoption. And it, what's interesting here about in Los Angeles, we've mentioned this before, that the pet store as we used to know it, the puppy mill sort of pet store, they're no longer allowed in Los Angeles, which is great. So the pet stores now that are here are basically adopting out, selling if you will, but I like the term adopting out, shelter dogs that they would go to a shelter, they find dogs that they feel would be the most adoptable, they clean them up, make sure they're spayed, neutered, and then they bring them to these quote-unquote pet stores, and they're all primped, and they look adorable, and it's sort of like they're making it easier for you to pick up certain dogs. And also, you know, just let it be known, don't think that if you really are heart set on a purebred dog or purebred cat, that you can only find them at a breeder. You would be amazed, absolutely amazed, how many purebreds are available for adoption right now at your local shelter or a rescue. In fact, there are so many rescues, especially in the larger cities, that deal specifically with breeds. 
mm-hmm. you know, Labrador rescue, golden retriever rescue, a poodle rescue. Every I mean, breed, yeah. Ev- almost every breed. And even breeds that you would think, oh, my God, there's no way I'm going to find this particular breed. For example, you know, I have two of them, and they have increased in popularity so over the last five years, and that is the French Bulldog. You can even find Frenchies now in Frenchie mm-hmm. Bulldog Rescue Group. So they are everywhere. And another frightening statistic, and I as a cat nut as well, I have five dogs but eight cats, and that is that in the U.S., a cat that ends up in a shelter has less than a 10% chance of being either reunited with its family or finding a forever home with another family. So again, it's frightening, guys. I mean, the whole goal of these city changes and municipal rules about pet shops was to stop the bleeding, if you will, of so many animals being put to sleep. And even shelters with the best intentions, shelters that if they could, if they had the funding, if they had the space, would become no-kill, still can't do it. And don't think, you know, interestingly, I read an article once by a shelter person, a shelter personnel, that, you know, you read, you think that these people are cold hearted and they don't give a darn. Not true. It kills them every time they have to put an animal to sleep, especially one that they know that if it just had a little more time, a few more people walking in the door, a few less people buying puppies from pet stores and instead going to the shelter, this life would have been saved. So it's really critical. So anyway, Diane, let's talk about JJ. Yeah. So uh, first of all, this book is adorable. And um, why don't you like, um, I'm sitting here, I have the book open, of course, and I'm, I hope you do as well. So it opens up with a little girl saying, since as long as I can remember, I've wanted a dog. And she would dream about dogs, dogs with flop ears and short legs and big dogs with pointy ears and long legs. The idea being there are so many. She already has a cat named Casey, and yeah. all she wants is a dog. So um, why don't you uh, kind of take us through it briefly. How did she uh, end up getting her dog in the first place? Well, you know, like many children, I want a dog, mom, can we please get a dog? And it's not uncommon. We hear it all the time. And the family wasn't ready. And this family, they were planning on buying a dog because they didn't know. And it's kind of like, in fact, it's exactly like I was. I just didn't know about the alternatives. And it turns out in the story that Maya's uncle's playing soccer, kind of like our friend was playing soccer on a field and finds this dog who he can't keep because he's in a in an apartment building. And he calls Maya, who's our protagonist in the book, the little girl who uh-huh. wants the dog, and calls Maya's dad and said, you know, I've found this dog. I know you guys are thinking about getting a dog. Would you? And so I can't keep the dog. And Maya says, please, can we keep him, please? And, you know, the mom says, well, I don't know if I want to trust a dog from the streets. And this is like, you know, it's my story. This is exactly what happened with me. But they took a look at the dog. And like what happened with me, I fell in love. And I realized that it wasn't that I needed the breed that I thought I wanted. But I fell in love with the dog. And I call it the dogness of the dog that you fall in love with. It's not the breed. It's the fact that they're a dog and you just fall in love. So in the story, they tentatively adopt JJ, and then they do all of the responsible things. And that's a big word that I use when I speak to students. Let's talk about the responsibility here. Well, first of all, the first thing you do when you find a dog is you need to make sure that the dog doesn't actually belong to somebody else. So you you go out and you put up posters in the neighborhood. You go to the shelter and give a description and... Sometimes people place an ad in the newspaper just to be safe and make sure, but you also want to make sure people aren't going to take advantage of of you and just take the dog. So they do all of these things to be responsible, but they also go to the vet the next day, which, as you know, is super important. You want to make sure that the dog is healthy and take care of anything like fleas or ticks or things that are going on and get them dewormed and just give them a good checkup. And then you want to get them good toys and a comfy bed and good quality food. And this is, these are all the things that they do in the book because it's important to know, well, now you found this dog and you're going to maybe rescue and adopt the dog, but there's other things to do afterwards to make sure that it's a successful relationship. And so they go through, they give the dog a bath, they buy some toys, and then there's a little bit of a, of a, um, a twist. They think that a neighbor calls, thinks that maybe this is their dog that they lost, and she's very honest. She said, no, that's not my dog. My dog was found somewhere else. Her dog had gotten loose. 
And not to give away the whole ending, but, you know, you can imagine that um, right. JJ, you know, the title of the story is how he came to live in our house. So it's kind of a little bit of a giveaway as it is. Right. So, yeah, so ultimately they get to keep JJ. They fall in love and Maya couldn't be happier with this new dog and the family really loves him too. Now, there are a couple of points here that, that I have to make and I so appreciate that you took a number of pages for kids that are going to have this book read to them and or ultimately maybe read it themselves is the importance of a kid who wants a dog so badly. And typically what happens is once they get the dog, the dog starts to take a back seat. I mean, they still love the dog and they want the dog to sleep in bed with them. It's all great. But as far as the bathing and the walking and the feeding and the cleaning up the, you know, the poop in the yard, it's sort of mom ends up doing that stuff. And we always, you know, the, the big joke is my mom will say when they come in with the kids and the kids, you know, wanted this dog, the mom says, yeah, I know it's going to be really be my dog. I'm going to be doing all the work. And, you know, a good thing to do is really teach kids at this age that, you know what, it's probably would be a good idea to teach them and it becomes a participation. It's a family affair. And, you know, one of the things that my folks used to do, and again, obviously, I grew up in a house that my parents had pets before they had the kids. And the same thing in, in my household. My kids were born into a home with pets. I never have been without a pet. My high school graduation present was my own dog who went to college with me and used to go to class with me. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what it's like not to have a pet, but it's so many yeah. kids. I'm amazed. I met a family the other day and I and uh, we were talking about pets and they were amazed that I have 13 and they said they don't have any pets. I said, how could you, how do you, I don't understand it. It's, it's such a I great way to teach either. kids responsibility and, and to mm-hmm. give that love. I mean, besides the fact that you're saving a life if you adopt, but there's so much more to a household where there are pets involved. I, and, you know, it's also interesting is as when I meet adults or even young adults that are absolutely petrified of pets, it's clear they've never had pets. They never had a pet in their home. I know. Right. Amazing. Then their kids are petrified Exactly. <laughs> and I have the exact scenario with an across street neighbor. He is scared. He literally, if he's walking and he sees a dog coming, he will go uh, four blocks out of his way to avoid the dog. And his kids are the same way. He had one incident when he was younger and And it's it's affected, it's scarred him ever since. And interestingly, and I tell the story that I, you know, I kind of reversed it. I actually wrote this in one of, you know, the chicken soup books, you know, it was chicken soup for the pet lover's soul edited by my good friend, Marty Becker. And Marty asked me to write a story. I wrote a story that happened to me when I was a kid. And after having a successful relationship with three boxers at home, Mm My dad fell in love with this 11-month-old intact male Doberman Pinscher Mm -hmm. that had just come off of the show ring. And for whatever reason, he didn't make it as the show dog, so they decided to sell him. And his sister, this dog's sister, lived down the block from us, was owned by an older couple. And the dog was magnificent. I was all of five. I was outside. And I came in the house. I was living in New York at the time, all bundled up. And again, I was not much of a talker, but my parents could only guess based on my injuries. But I apparently stepped on this sleeping Doberman. Oh, no. Who jumped up out of reflex and literally, very literally, grabbed me by the face and ripped open my entire left side of my face, under my nose, chin. My mom said, you could see into my mouth from my cheek. So it was a bit obviously traumatic and I had uh, fortunately a a very competent plastic surgeon put me back together. Mm -hmm. And yet when I got home from the hospital, instead of being, you know, scared, you know, whatless, I was in bed. I was all bandaged up and my arm, I was still kind of drugged up and this dog walked into the room. My arms were at my side. He nudged his nose under my right arm because it was like literally limp. He kind of kept advancing. So now my arm, my limp arm is draped on his neck and shoulder area. He rested his head on my chest and he sat there all night long. Yeah. He didn't mean to hurt you. Of course not. And I write about this dog, this story, and it was like, to me, talk about a bond. I mean, this dog, if I could anthropomorphize, I would say he was actually sorry. It was not what he meant to do. Anyway, we got to take a quick break here. We'll be back in just a few minutes. We're here with Diane Rose Solomon, who wrote a great book, JJ, the American Street Dog. And um, I want to talk a couple of other things, plus a children's book that I used to read to my kids. And one of the pages in here just reminded me so much of it that I will share with you when we come back. We'll be back here with Dr. Jeff and Diane Rose Solomon. Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Petco, where the pets go. Petco, where the pets go. 
Let's go. Pet Life Radio has tail wagging, fur flying, fabulous deals for our listeners from Petco. Get $6 off your order of $60 or more and up to 40% off the entire Petco site. That's right. But that's not all. Because you're a Pet Life Radio listener, you'll also get free shipping on your order of $49 or more. $6 off, up to 40% off, and free shipping from Pet Life Radio and Petco. To get these awesome deals, go to PetcoDeals.com. That's PetcoDeals.com. Petco, where the pets go. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership Plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. Victoria Schaefer, aspiring actress, babysitter extraordinaire, college student, and animal enthusiast, is on her own for the first time in New York City. Follow Victoria and her two dogs, Rue and Echo, as she cares for her furry friends and juggles home life and career, all the while managing to survive in the world's most hectic city. The exciting animal adventures and secret stories from both ends of the leash that make up the tales of the city. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> And welcome back. After the short break, you are here live with Dr. Jeff Werber on Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio. And we have, uh, I, I would normally say in studio, but probably in her own studio, home studio, <laughs> is Diane Rose Solomon, author of this really, really cute book that teaches a lot of things, including responsibility and adoption and the importance of both. It's called J.J., the American Street Dog, and How He Came to Live in Our House. So we were talking before the break about and I was reading this book, and it's absolutely adorable. Anyone out there with small kids, it's a must. So I'm reading this, and on page 16, it shows they're giving this dog, that J.J., that they found uh, this little girl Maya's uncle found on the street while he was playing soccer, and they're you know, teaching one of the responsible things to do is you'd have to bathe your dog. So there's a picture of the Maya and the mom and, and little J.J. being bathed. And I don't know, Diane, do you ever hear or remember a book called Harry the Dirty Dog. Absolutely. So, <laughs> all right, so that is one of my favorites. So, and basically, in Harry the Dirty Dog, a family has a dog named Harry, and he was a white dog with black spots, and he's lost, runs away. He gets out, and they're looking all over for him. In the process of looking for Harry, they find this really cute dog about the same size, seems to look a lot like Harry, but this is a black dog with white spots. So it can't be Harry because Harry's a white dog with black spots. So the story goes on that they end up, you know, they can't find Harry and the kids beg and beg and they get to finally keep this other dog. And of, of course, because he was an outside dog and he was filthy, they put him into the tub. And what do they find out after all this? That this black dog with white spots, after they clean him up, is actually a white dog with black spots. And it was Harry coming home again. Yeah, so, so and it was really, really cute. I have and forgotten I, about that book. <laughs> and, I, and it's funny because my daughter just had a daughter. So we've gotten out all the old kids' books. And of course, being a veterinarian, I have a zillion of pet stories. We found Harry the Dirty Dog, and it's, I can't wait to read it. And Thank now I get you. to add this to the collection. Now, let's speak of collections, Diane. It seems like there are more JJ books uh, on the horizon. What's your plan? There, there sure are. Well, the next one is coming out this fall because you know now that you've successfully adopted a pet and may start to acclimate to your home and you've gotten all the necessary things that you want for them, the goodies, and you're giving them love and they're giving you love back, but you also want them to behave properly so that they're doing what you expect of them. So you take them to puppy class. So JJ's going to go to puppy class starting this fall. Oh, and, that's great. Uh, 
Yeah, that's great. And then there's three more behind that as well. That should, I don't know when they're coming, but they're coming. And the next one after that is introducing a um, dog to a new baby that comes into the family. I think Maya's going to have a new sibling. Okay. And that's always important to do that correctly. And then after that, the importance of service and therapy dogs, because if everybody just knew how wonderful dogs are and what they can do for us, people, I think, would have a whole new respect for dogs. Right. And then the fifth one that's written so far is about misunderstood breeds, like you were talking about your, your doby when you were a child, and pit right. bulls, which is a big thing with breed-specific legislation, and how they're it's really not the breed, it's really the deed, and it's an isolated thing. Right. And it's really how you treat an animal that determines how they're going to act. And I often say when it comes to that, that in Baron's case, that's my Doberman, it was just the wrong dog in the wrong situation. He, yeah. You know what I mean? This dog had never been around kids, four rambunctious kids, all under the age of, of six. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my dad had no idea how he, you know, the Dobermans are reactive. He was intact. He was never fixed. He was never neutered. Mm-hmm. So all these things come into play. And he turned out to be, he, by the way, after this happened, of course, we were not, as dog lovers, he was not going anywhere but to another home. And mm-hmm. the older couple down the street that had his sister ended up adopting Baron and took Baron in. And he was an amazing dog. But you have to sometimes understand lifestyle, how much time you're going to have. It's all a matter of selecting the right dog for you. And, and the right dog in one environment, one situation, may not be right for another one. And it's rarely the dog, as you say. I work with um, a number of rescue groups. And one of them, I actually two of them, deal pretty much solely with pits. One is called Ace of Hearts, and mm-hmm. one is called Angel City Pits. And I have to tell you that they adopt out the most amazing dogs. Mm-hmm. And by nature, these dogs, you know, I always joke, I get more tongue than anybody I know. And I, I am literally licked in the face by these dogs daily. It's amazing how misunderstood they are. And another one called Rescue Pet adopts out and they go to the shelters. Again, this is a breed that is often destroyed because of their reputation. And that's the Chow Chow. And yeah. Blake finds the most amazing, sweetest Chow Chows. And yeah. so they're out there, and I am so much against these legislations. Actually, you know, it, it, there are more bites that are attributed to, say, a Chihuahua or a Cocker Spaniel than to a Pit Bull, partly because, obviously, they're much more popular dogs. But the bites, are, it, it doesn't make the news. No one's going to lose a limb or an arm or a finger because of a Cocker Spaniel or a Chihuahua bite. But, of course, when a Pit Bull does it, or a Rottweiler or a Chow Chow, it's major news. It's, um, news. it's, it's, it's a problem. Much. It's not fair. Absolutely not fair. Yeah. One of the stories, and I, and I don't know how far along you are, but I deal with it a lot, and I would you know, love to maybe chat with you at some point off air, or even we could talk about it on air, be a great segment, is the baby and the introduction of a resident dog and a new baby, and yeah. some suggestions to make that introduction seamless. And I yeah, find it's, it's that- done well, and I've seen it not done well, as I'm sure you have too. You know? Oh, Absolutely. And I, I think that that's another one where, you know, it, it's unfortunately, when it's not done well, it could be disaster. And it's sort of like when you sit back and think about some of the suggestions that I would offer, you'd say, oh, my God, that makes so much sense. And it does. But then why are people doing it so wrong? You know, most mm-hmm. of the people don't realize that what they're doing is they are encouraging resentment when you do it the wrong way. Exactly. And, and between dog, between about. resident dog mm-hmm. and baby. Boys, if you do it the right way, and then if anything, what I, I always say, that dog is going to be saying to himself, where is that little baby? Give me that baby because I'm getting all the treats and attention when I got this little kid in the room. Exactly. And, uh, the association that's made. That's all exactly. Of. Instead of, you know, people make the mistake and they say, okay, no, I feel so guilty about the dog and I'm giving all this attention to the baby. So I'm going to shower all my affection and love onto the dog when the baby's asleep. Well, then what are you doing? You're teaching the dog that life is better without the baby. Right. You need to teach the dog that life is better when the baby is there. And mm-hmm. so the dog wants the baby there. It's all psychology. And it's ma- it makes sense. It's not like it's, uh, oh, my God, it's so difficult. It makes all the sense in the world. It's common sense. And yeah. we often, unfortunately, do it the wrong way. But these are absolutely great, great books. We look forward to it. Can you give us some information real quick before we have to sign off? Where can we find your book? Well, you can find it on my website, and that is sop3publishing.com, and the S is in Sam, O, P as in Peter, 3, the number 3, 
www.thepublishing.com. And if anybody does wish to purchase a copy and they shoot me an email through the website and say that they learned of it through your show, I will sign it to them. Oh, good. Um, By the way, everybody, yeah. my copy is signed as well. But, uh, yeah. And then if people prefer Amazon, it's available at Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble. Excellent. Well, yeah. I do want to thank you. Our time is up because half hour thank goes you. very fast. Best of luck. And again, I would love to, um, if it's not too late, um, read over your manuscripts, uh, maybe throw in a, a suggestion or two. Um, I'd, love to, I'd love to discuss it. And, uh, but anyway, uh, it was great having you. When, you. when the next one comes up, we will have you back for sure and thank talk you. about that as well. And thanks for joining us. I want to thank our sponsors once again. Next week, we have a very special guest. Her name is Dr. Heather Lenzer. You can see her on Fox & Friends. You can see her doing some segments on the Today Show. And we're going to talk about diseases that both pets and people seem to get. It's very funny um, and sad at the same time. And it's amazing how many similarities there are between us and our four-legged friends. So we'll see you next week here on Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff on Pet Life Radio. Thank our sponsors, ProSense, Walmart, Kong. And uh, we'll see you next week. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.